Welcome in everyone. Today we'll be doing a deep dive into the Outlier Pro filter settings. Now there's a lot of information to gather here, so we're gonna go step by step and break down what each filter setting is and how you can use it to maximize your profits when it comes to sports betting. Whether you're a veteran sports better or brand new, this video is gonna help you optimize which filter settings you should be using. Now, we each have different agendas and different game plans to attack the sports betting markets. So this will vary based on your strategy, but we will talk about each type of these options that you'll have. Before we dive into the outlier pro plan filter settings, let's first discuss exactly what the pro plan does. Now this is a top-down service, which gives us the ability to find positive expected value bets in the sports betting market. Essentially what Outlier does is it scans multiple sports books and compares their prices and odds so that we can identify outliers that have really good prices and percent and edge to the other books. Now Outlier also has a bunch of these filter settings that we're gonna talk about, what makes it really easy to identify these plays and customize exactly what plays you want to look for, whether you have a more aggressive strategy or maybe a safer approach. The first filter setting we're gonna talk about here is the DVIG book or the DVIG books in this case, because Outlier offers the option to use multiple books in your DVIG process. If you don't know what the DVIG process is, essentially what you're doing is you're selecting a list of sports books to remove the VIG from or the tax to find a fair value of that line and then use that fair value to scan the rest of the market and find your edge. So here we have a large group of sports books that we can use. The sharpest sports books available in the whole market are typically Pinnacle, Circa, and Bookmaker for a lot of the main lines, uh, spreads and totals because they take more money than any other book is willing to take on their bets, which means they have to have the most accurate and sharp lines in the industry. So in this setting right here, what we can do is require which books we want used in the DVIG process. So typically I want to use some type of blend of Pinnacle, Circa, and Bookmaker. It's kind of a personal preference, but it's also industry standard at the same time. What I typically like to do is use all three of these books as optional. That means if any one of these books pop up as presenting value to the market, it'll flag the play. If you want to be even more selective and more kind of conservative to your approach, you can go down here and select the minimum number of books. So typically, if you want to be conservative, you could require that at least two of the sharp books you selected have the odds set for a particular line and then compare it to the market. The more books you add to your DVIG process, the more you can trust that your fair value is accurate. So you can select the number of minimum books and then you can also go into uniform weight. And this is giving more weight or less weight to each sports book that you have selected in the DVIG process. So for example, if you think Pinnacle is maybe sharper in the NFL, you could weigh them maybe 100 compared to the 50 circa 50 bookmaker. And this isn't percentage based. You have to think of this as parts. So this would be, you know, 100 parts Pinnacle, 50 parts circa 50 parts bookmaker in this blend. And this is something that you can play with uh, moving the sliders up and down. It's really easy to customize whichever blend you would like. And that's pretty much the DVIG process. Like I said, this is the most important thing to nail. Uh, put in some research to figure out which books are sharpest and which markets before you uh, go crazy here. But Pinnacle and Circle Bookmaker are pretty much the standard in the industry to use as fair value prices. So great things here in this filter setting. The next filter setting we're going to talk about is the DVIG method. Now, there are four different DVIG methods listed here. We have the multiplicative, the additive, the shin, and the power method. Now, the reason there are four different DVIG methods and there isn't just one that covers it all is because we don't know exactly where the VIG or the tax lies in each set of odds. Sometimes it is more put on the favorite and sometimes it is put on the underdog. We don't really know. So using different DVIG methods, we can get a better uh, picture of where the VIG is placed. Now, in my personal preference, I found that using the multiplicative and additive method for odds under plus 200 works really well. It's more standard across the industry. And this basically assumes that the odds are, I mean, the VIG is almost divided equally uh, for the favor and the underdog. Now, the shin and the power method is what I usually typically use when I'm looking at bets over plus 300, plus 400, something with more long shots. That, that's just personal preference. I found out that it works the best uh, with that strategy. But I do recommend using a worst case DVIG method. So if you start your search with 
the multiplicative method. Once you click into that positive EV bet on the Outlier Pro page, it's actually going to break down the EV percentage based to based on each of these DVIG options, right? So if you pl click on a plus EV play, it'll show you if it's plus EV to all of these options. If you are trying to be more conservative, then I would be only placing plays that are plus EV to all four DVIG methods. But I think the multiplicative is a safe place to start, and that is the DVIG default setting on the Outlier Pro plan anyway. The next filter setting is the variation setting. And this is a measurement of how much your DVIG books agree with each other. If you have a very low variation percentage, that means that your sharp books that you selected agree with each other. And if it's only a 2% difference in odds, that means they have very similar odds. But if your DVIG books are different by, let's just say 5%, then that means your sharp books don't necessarily align on the prices that they think will happen. And it could just mean there's a little bit more uncertainty in that DVIG process. So if you want to be more conservative, you would leave this number lower. You just want to see plays where your DVIG books agree with each other and then find plays to the rest of the market. If you go a little bit higher, you will find any type of blend even if your DVIG books do not completely agree with each other, you'll still find plays, which is probably fine. But if you want to be conservative and find even better edges, then I would lower this number down. Filter setting number three is the Kelly multiplier. Now, this is referring to the Kelly criterion formula, which is used as a reference point for how much of your bankroll you should be placing on each bet. Essentially, what the Kelly criterion formula does is it takes your risk or chance of winning or losing and also your edge and determines an optimal bet size. Now, if your edge goes up, then the Kelly Criterion Formula is going to recommend you betting more money. Or if your chance of winning goes up, it'll recommend you betting more money as well. And this is obviously works in the opposite direction as well, where if your probability of losing increases, then it's going to have you put less money down on that wager. So what the Kelly multiplier does is just a... Multi multiplier of that formula. Now, a full Kelly multiplier is very, very aggressive. I don't think I would recommend it. It is the default setting here. So I would at least bump it down to a half. Uh, you don't want to be betting more than you know a few units on each play. So if you can start your multiplier probably at a half of Kelly, that's a really good option. If you're new to EV betting, I would possibly start at a quarter or eighth, but the markets that you're hitting that you're really confident in, you can leave this multiplier at a half because it is a really good option to maximize your bankroll growth and decrease its downswings by using the multiplier here on the Kelly Criterion formula. So basically it just depends on how aggressive you wanna be with your unit sizing, what it really comes down to. I wouldn't go over the half Kelly. If you wanna be real conservative and take a, you know, safer approach, then I would bump it down to eighth Kelly and start betting with that recommended unit size. The next filter setting we're going to look at here is the minimum EV percentage. Now this is pretty simple. This is how big of an edge do you want before it appears on the outlier pro plan? So sometimes I will leave this at zero and I will scan the market for any positive EV bet. But sometimes if I want to be more conservative, I'll bump this up to two or 3%. If you're just starting sports betting, I recommend leaving this at around that 3% range, it's going to give you really good edges and decrease the variance you're going to see because you're betting larger edges. The one thing I will say, increasing your EV percentage, you're probably not going to find as many main market plays like spreads, totals, or money lines because these markets are pretty efficient and books don't cast themselves as huge outliers with like 5% EV plays because they are real efficient markets. Now, player props, you might find 10% EV plays, you might find 12% EV plays, but when it comes to spreads, totals, and money lines, you're it's really unlikely to find more than 3% EV. So depending on what you're looking for here, you can adjust your EV percentage based on that. But for beginner bettors, 2 to 3%, uh, I'd recommend you guys stick into over that. But if you're just looking for any bet that has positive EV, then you can bump it all the way back to zero and just kind of scan the whole market on, on EV bets. The next filter setting here is the minimum Kelly percentage. And this is directly related to the Kelly Criterion formula. And this is just how much percent of your bankroll does the Kelly Criterion formula want you to place on each bet. So you can drag this up if you want the, you know, the Kelly Criterion formula to say 2%, which means that 
the formula found found plays that want you to bet 2% of your bankroll on these plays. These are going to be plays with larger edges and higher win probabilities. So the, the more you drag this up and the higher Kelly percentage you have on this filter setting, the better plays you're going to have, but the less amount of plays you're going to have. So I personally just leave this to zero because I will place any percent of my bankroll on a bet as long as it has an edge. So personally, I just leave this at zero. But if you want to be extra conservative, only look for, you know, those real big plays, then you can drag that up to, you know, two, three percent of your bankroll. Under the minimum Kelly percentage is the filter setting VIG percentage. And this is just how much VIG is actually in these sports books lines. For an example here, we have all the up to a 9.8% VIG in one of these markets that Outlier is scanning for. So if we don't want to see markets with a ton of VIG baked in, we can obviously drag this lower and find plays with less VIG. Now, the one thing I'll say here is if, when you're betting with an edge, you can kind of ignore the VIG because we are overcoming the VIG with our edge. But what adjusting VIG percentage will do is let's just say these high markets with a ton of VIG are, are probably like home run hitter props. They're probably, you know, maybe triples, like a lot of these obscure, maybe some three point player props, a lot of these obscure player prop markets with a lot of variance and a lot of VIG baked in. If you want to stick to more traditional betting, like spreads, totals, money lines, maybe even like first quarter plays like that, you're going to see most of those plays popping up, you know, under 5% in VIG. So if you want to see all the crazy long shot bets, you're probably going to have to set your VIG percentage up to show everything. But if you're sticking to plays with lower VIG and more mainline stuff, then you can set your VIG percentage much lower. This next setting here is the no VIG fair odds. And this is just what we wanna filter for, for our maximum and minimum odds that we wanna play. So typically I'll play down to anything. Uh, as long as there's an edge, I'll play down into the minus three, four hundreds if I need to. But when it comes to the plus side, I typically like to actually bet under plus 250 odds. I don't like placing a ton of long shots. So my filter range is typically anything on the negative side and then up to plus 250. So that means if there's a positive EV play that flags at plus 300 odds, my filter setting will not pick that up because I'm not filtering plays over plus 250. So this is just uh, kind of a ballpark range that you want to be in for your odds. Plus 200 is probably the maximum that I would go if I was a beginner better because once you start playing long shots, you're going to start going on some losing streaks, even if you have an edge. It just increases your chance of more variance in your bankroll. And beginner bettors do not like variance and losing. So I typically recommend starting with a, a lower uh, Novig odds here. The next setting is the market width or the max width. Basically what market width is, it's the difference between the odds, the sense difference. So if there's a line at plus 120, and the other side is minus 110, you take that difference there and that is a 10 cent width is what we would call it. So basically it's the same way as almost setting your VIG percentage. They're correlated in a lot of ways, uh, but having a lower width percentage is going to give you plays that have probably lower VIG, um, tighter markets. And then if you expand into larger widths, you're gonna see more, like I said, home run props where one side is priced at plus 300 and the other side is minus 500. So there's a 200 width in between those odds. So a lot of people will recommend playing under a 40 width. Um, I'm open to anything depending on what I'm looking for, but just another little filter setting that you can dial in exactly what you need. The next few filter settings are kind of self-explanatory here, but we'll go over them anyway. For bet types, there's four different bet types here. There's game lines, there's player props, there's team props, and there's game props. Now, depending on which market you're trying to attack, you can just isolate. You only want to look for game lines, or if you only want to look for player props, or if you want to look for all of them, you can leave that selected. So I typically will build out filter settings for game lines, and then I'll build another filter setting out for player props. And then what you can do is actually save your filters down here, and you can get notified for plays that fit your criteria. So another quick example is when I'm saving my filters and getting notification for these bets, I typically set my thresholds high so that I only get notifications for really good bets. So that's just something that I do personally. But let's move down here. Range type, I mean, real self-explanatory. We can filter plays that are the next 24 hours, the next three three days, a week away, uh, you know, two weeks away or this month. 
Uh, just, you know, if you're looking for events in the next 24 hours, that's typically what I look for. It's hard to find value on events that are really far out. The leagues, uh, same type of thing here. We got a bunch of soccer leagues we can filter through. We have the main markets, the NBA, MLB, NHL. That's just what's going on right now. Outlier obviously has football and stuff like that, but it's just not in season. So if you want to attack just the NBA market and build a filter out to just attack NBA props or game lines, then you can build that filter and you can select, you know, all the leagues or just individual leagues as well. This next setting down here is when you're placing bets on the outlier pro plan, you can hide the bets that you have already placed. Um, I typically like to actually hide the bets um, that I've placed so I don't accidentally place them again, but you can leave this on to show them so that you see which bets you've already placed. Uh, just something personal preference right there. And then finally, this is the books that you have access to. These are the books that you are going to be placing these bets on. For me personally, I don't have Bet365, Prize Picks, Underdog, or Sleeper. So I leave these books on right here. FanDuel, DraftKings, ESPN Bet, Caesars, and MGM. Those are the books that I'm going to be searching for value on, and I'll be attacking these markets looking to make money. If you have any questions about any of these filter settings, please leave it in the comments below. Myself or an Outlier team member will answer it as quick as we can. I appreciate you guys watching. If you want to sign up for the Outlier Pro Plan, there's a seven-day free trial, so check that out below in the description. Please like and share this video. I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time.